Everybody, welcome back to New Market. I'm Yumble, and today I wanted to discuss something kind of specific with you about this work in progress city and how we bring things to life, how we make an area look livable and, and beautiful. I think it's easy to make a city that is functional. It takes some time to learn, of course, but I think it's easy to understand road hierarchy and understand building placement, get all the right services in there, get your taxes just right, play the base game essentially perfectly. I think that's totally doable, but the art comes into it when you try to build an area that's plausible enough that people want to live there and people want to be there and it's also nice to look at. Let me highlight what I'm talking about here. So this elementary school has a lot of good stuff going on. It's got a good uh, little road network for drop-offs in front of the school. So there's a bus lane and a car lane. There's a, a parking lot that cars can actually drive into. I'm gonna show you how that network works today. But there's also these extra things. There's these curb networks with bushes on them to add realism. With actually, there's there's paths. You don't have to get this crazy with it, but there's paths so that people can leave their cars and walk on the path to get to the crosswalk. Uh, we have these trees that came right from the map. I selected the maple trees that are on the map so as to integrate this into the map at large. And also some decals of fallen leaves and some, some uh, lunch tables. You know, if people want to go outside and have lunch, then cool if they're allowed. Uh, bushes along a wall. Things like this, these things that don't affect the gameplay at all, but will absolutely make an area look desirable in comparison, uh, where otherwise it might look barren. A lot of the same stuff going on here at the courthouse. Uh, I want to point out the bollards that are meant to deter traffic from driving through here. Not that traffic could drive through here in the game, but in real life, somebody may make a mistake and jump the curb. So the bollards make a lot of sense to me. Uh, another area is this church here. Same idea with the planters for people to sit on. All things like this, all of these ideas bring a section of the city to life. And ultimately, I'll, I'll end up doing this more and more to all areas of the city as we go on. But today, I'd like to put together a high school for you. I'd like to put together a, a high school scene that looks plausible and looks like people would go to school there. And it should also look really nice if I've done my job correctly. Uh, everyone, thanks for being here. Let's build a high school. The spot that I've picked out for this high school is in this quadrant of the city. And there's two buildings, two main buildings at least, probably just these two, that I want to integrate into this city block, basically. So there's a main road coming in that's diagonal. Uh, we'll use that to our advantage by letting there be maybe some sort of sitting space along it. I'm, I'm not exactly sure yet. Uh, but we're going to play the whole thing by ear. I would love for these two buildings to look like they are the same building by the end of this. So I might end up using uh, repaint to colorize them a little bit. But let me show you what I'm what I'm talking about here. You'll notice that the second I move this one, I'm using move it. It's a mod, right? Uh, the second I move this away from the road, it shows the no road icon. We're going to solve that in just a moment. I want to show you how our... our uh, pavement roads work in this game. That's going to be important. And I also want to show you how to integrate the pavement roads into parking lots. So we should be able to get some cool stuff done with this. Let's see how these fit together, if they fit together. I suspect they do. It's just a matter of figuring out exactly where. That's probably good. We can leave the school a little bit recessed, and people will also use this as an entrance right from the road, so that's great. I'm gonna turn this to see if there's doors on this side. There aren't, perfect. So this side here, there's no doors on the building. So we're not gonna be blocking any doors or having people walk through the, the building to get there. So that's a good thing. Ooh, there's an idea. Let's use the back of the building to line it up with move it, just so we have a better mesh on this from all angles, just so it kind of melds together well. Uh, Cause we're gonna be looking at this from all sides, not just the front, I imagine. That looks really good. I can foresee some benches along here, uh, probably some trees and things to, to make it look nicer. But let me show you what road network we're gonna end up using for this whole thing. These are beautiful. They're by the uh, the mod, the modder chameleon for, the, uh, for City Skylines. Amazing creator. And I'm gonna use two-way roads for now, just to get us going. Part of me wants to curve this but I think I'm not going to. I think we'll make it angular, perhaps. 
And this is going to be a bit wild. This is going to be a bit of trial and error. I foresee maybe a, a faculty lot over here and maybe the student lot is over here with good walkability to get into the building. So let's just complete this and see what, see what that does for us. Not bad, not bad at all. Let's do this one more actually. There's a trick with, with this network. There's a trick with these roads. You can make the parking lanes two units apart. So what I foresee... Oh, you'll notice I'm using two different types of roads as well. They're both part of the same pack. So it's called pavement, uh, flat pavement road. The connector piece, which is from the small roads bucket, is for connecting to regular networks with curbs. And it makes this great transition. And the other one is under highways. And the reason you use that is because there's no... Tran uh, it's smaller is why you want to use it for the parking lot. And there's no transition, so don't ever connect that one. It'll be obvious if you do it. So you want to use the transition to pull this off. Uh, now, with a bit of magic, I'm going to convert this back into the regular type, which isn't ultimately what we're going to use because we don't want these lamps in the middle of the road. But I want to see just how many parking spaces I can fit in here. So I'm going to search parking. Uh, you might you might have just noticed that I searched football. I'd like to add a football stadium to this area as well. I forgot to mention that. But just for the sake of example, nice. That is where the road is actually, or rather that's where the parking lot is gonna go. And that looks really good to me. That little space there will be good as a, as a buffer between the parking and the road so we can add some trees and, and do all that beautification stuff I was talking about. So using move it, you can hold uh, alt, I believe. Yes, if you hold alt and then right click and drag, you'll move things. So what I've done is I duplicated, I clicked on, on this asset, I hit duplicate in the bottom right corner. And then if you hold alt, it turns on snapping, right click and drag. I just turned it around and then held alt again to snap it in place to this grid that we've created. So that's a really strong start. Now let's see if we can make a, a bus lane. So that's our faculty lot. Now that we've now that we've done the snapping, we can convert this to the non-light bulb road, so the non-connector road. And we're gonna continue with the non-connector road up into this area. So I should be able to do two units up. I'm gonna turn off road guidelines. Two units. We're gonna go across. We go down. Can I fit one more two unit section is the question. I am gonna turn off, this is called node snapping. We're gonna deactivate that and just see if this works. I'm also gonna turn off the grid. I don't actually want it to snap to anything other than the length. So I want exactly two units. Now we're getting very, very close to the building. Tell you what, rethink it. Instead of going two units up, let's go three units up towards the school. I'm going to turn node snapping back on for this. Three units up. And then this will be our bus lane. And perhaps it also goes out along here. And this will be our other parking lot. So I'm going to leave this hanging for now. This will give access to the... Uh, this little segment here gives access to the gymnasium, which I might just leave as a park. This is called City High Gym. I may keep that as a park, or we, we may co convert it to something educational. I'm not sure yet, but I'm flexible. Let me know if you have suggestions. If we wanted to, we could copy one of these and do the same thing again. I don't know if I'm going to commit to that. Eh. Nah. Uh, control Z to undo <laughs> and move it. We're going to undo that. That is going to be the parking lot in front of the school. Now let's see what kind of pattern we can come up for this one. Do, 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 do. That seems appropriate. And then two units. I'm going to turn off node snapping again so I can make this small spot here. That gives us something. That gives us a starting point. So the beautiful thing about this pavement road is that it, it blends in. So the final result you can see in the church, it's fully drivable, though you can't see the road. 
I really don't want to use uh, parking lot roads for this because they, they just kind of... It's overkill. It's just too much. The area ends up too big. I'm trying to keep it all within this block and I want it to look fairly uh, natural. If I could get these in asphalt, I would consider it. I'm sure that's out there. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll think about it. <laughs> uh, let's look for more parking spaces and see what fits here. So maybe one by four or one by five. One by three. One by four. I'm thinking one by five is the way to go. And we'll see if we can even fit it in this spot that I'm trying to. Let's see, one by five. R1 would be ideal, or L1. I would take either of them. One by five. R1, sure. Now using snapping, I might be able to snap this right into place. Um, hmm. Somewhat fraudulent because of that little extension. Somewhat fraudulent, perhaps. Let me change the type of road to our regular one here. And we'll see if that changes the zoning squares at all. I don't think it will. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Let's just do four units instead. I'm going to keep this entire idea, but I'm going to do a four unit segment instead for the parking. The parking lots are by Dragon Rider. I'm using them all over the city. They're very solid for my purposes. If you've seen the earlier episodes, you're already familiar with these things. Okay, one by four, L1, sure. We'll turn it around. Cool. I might move the gymnasium over just a little bit. I think that's probably the, the solution for this whole thing. It's just take the gymnasium and just nudge it over using move it just enough to buy us that, that parking space or that set of parking spaces. Oh, the lights are in there. Yeah, it's very important actually. So we're just gonna move it over just enough so that people don't hit the wall every time they try to park. And that actually looks really good. Uh, the buildings are clipped together currently, but that's not an uncommon move in city skylines. The buildings don't really have collision if you're using anarchy. So just go to town, stick buildings together. Who cares? And I'm going to use the R2 version of this road. Check it. Accessibility parking. Done. Cool. Uh, let's do the opposing segment to this. So another four unit. I would do one by four L1 for this. Oh God. So we're gonna take this using move it, drag it over. Nice. And then we're gonna duplicate it, rotate it while holding alt, plop it while holding alt, another parking spot there. The question here, so now I'm at a bit of a crossroads. I can, I could put another spot here which doesn't look bad, but that doesn't allow for any sort of buffer along the edge of the road. Which isn't necessary completely. Eh, let me mess around for a bit and, uh, and see what I can come up with here. Just a moment.
I think that about does it for the parking lot portion. So you can see this is the bones of the whole thing. This is the, the concept. We've got our student slash accessibility parking. We've got faculty parking over here. Uh, this is going to be a bus lane in a minute, I think. Perhaps that's what we'll figure out next, actually. But there's a whole bunch of a uh, whole bunch of seasoning that's going to go on top of this. A whole bunch of stuff that's going to make it look uh, look pretty cool. How about what if this was a one-way road that went up and around? I think that this whole thing is probably a one-way road, or at least. Parts of it are a one-way road, just to control the traffic as the buses come in. So looking at the routes that we've chosen, the two roads here are neither of which are major routes, honestly, so that's kind of nice. So cars are going to turn in here. I would love for them to go up this way, around this way, and out this way. I think that's going to be our, our way to go. Let me, let me think on that for just a moment. I decided to switch up the faculty parking a little bit. I figured we'd do two, three segments instead of a, a seven segment parking space. And I want to do a path on this middle section here that leads to a crosswalk. Cause I think that that's entirely logical. That's just one of those little appointments that might make all the difference once the whole thing is done. Or I, <sighs> You could say that <laughs> you could say that you you don't have to do any of this really, but it looks so nice once you've done it. I, I just think it's so worth doing. So I cannot recommend it enough, honestly. Here's what I'm gonna do. Using the grid, I've centered that exactly. Oh, and we're gonna do a one-way road along this. I've already done it there, but we're gonna end up doing this will be one-way road along here. I've accidentally deleted my path, but that's okay. I can go back easy enough. What I need to do now is find the center of this and eliminate it. Let's see if I can turn off the grid. I can always guess. How about this? Let's use, uh, let's use our, our jam here. Let's use node controller and we're gonna add a crossing. So I'm just gonna eyeball it by looking in front of the door looking at where the door is. There it is, so now I've added a crossing node. So that splits this into two separate little spots here. I really wish that these didn't have the lights. I didn't realize, oh, interesting. The two-way roads don't have lights. The lights are okay. They're not gonna get in the way and that's all that really matters. But I think that's a good idea there. I'm gonna turn the grid back on. We're gonna establish this path here, which will also have a little a little light on it. Yeah, light on the left side is good. If I wanted to move the light to the right side, I would redraw the path the opposite direction. But one thing I notice, I would like to switch these out for this type of light. So I'm gonna use the mod Bob, AKA beautify our builds. This is street lamp 02. I'm going to switch this light to street lamp 02. So clicking this with Bob, uh, alt N to activate it. Click the prop you want to replace, Street Lamp 02, replace it on this network, these networks. Perfect. Excellent. So now we've got some continuity. We've got these old style lamps. If I want to get rid of them, I will, but for now, I, I, I want to keep them there. Um, it'll probably look much nicer at, at night with them. Uh, as far as this crossing node we just established, let's do it right and make it an actual crossing. Gorgeous. So now you can actually see where people are going to get out of their cars and, and walk right into the building. I might center this on the path rather than centering it on the door. Let's center it on the path instead. And if I want to recenter the door, I'll move it towards the gymnasium, though I don't think I will because we're losing margin over here. I don't want this window to get cut in half or anything. That's probably the an office of some sort. I don't know what that is. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> the lore is up to interpretation. The lore can be can be whatever. Oh, you know what I can do to actually perfect this? Select that with move it and then select these two nodes and then align. Oh no, it's not gonna do it. If I hit line up objects, no, yeah, I take it back. I lied, I lied, forgive me. We're just gonna do it, uh, we're just gonna eyeball it effectively. Cool. 
So I'm just trying to align these three so that the path leads directly to the crosswalk. And the crosswalk leads directly to the school. Perfect. Perfect. Looks good. So this is two-way. Just to explain the entire concept here of the road network for the parking lot. Two-way road. Two-way road. Two-way road. I'll turn off collision to avoid accidentally deleting that again. So these are all two-way roads. Also this one. So to get in and out of this parking lot, you can use either way in. Though this bus lane, you probably wouldn't want to. So most people will probably use this one to get in and out for this. And then the bus lane will be largely uninhibited. And we can use intersection marking tool here. This is, I, I would usually do this later, but let me show you how it looks now. Let's do, let's do a little sped up, uh, sped up version. I have another video about intersection marking tool if you want the minutia of this, but uh, let's, let's see how this works. One crazy thing about this network that I'm using is that it doesn't have arrows built in. So it'll never show what direction the traffic is supposed to be going. The vehicles in game will know and they'll they'll abide by the law. But visually, I think that that's something that's lacking here. So I'm going to go over to the other school. I'm going to copy some of the arrow assets that I use just to remind me. Oh, and the bus lane asset too. So I've got these these nice little decals. I can borrow these as needed. <laughs> so ready? I can put down a, a bus lane decal and then rotate it to match the road and then hold alt while dragging with the with the right click and we've got our bus lane established. So I'm going to put down the bus decal here and I'm going to duplicate it and put another one here just so everybody knows. This is probably not a realistic bus lane marking, but in game, I think it's going to look very nice. I think it's going to be very uh, well defined what's happening here. So just like the bus lane, I've also got these arrows and I think all of these came with the road pack that I'm using. Uh, I'd like to, let's just get a regular arrow first, copy it over. Let's just bring it in here and we'll rotate it. So it's the same as the road and I'll just make, make sure 
that the intent of each of these each of these uh, directions here is visible so that everybody knows exactly what's going on and that this is absolutely a one-way road there's no second lane uh, let me throw in some decals and just show you what that might look like So all that's really cool. The uh, As you can see, the lane arrows take a whole bunch of work to do, but the result is really good, I think. But there's, there's more. There's one thing I want to say. I would like to do the same thing, but opposite. I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing, but I'm going to turn this whole road around so that it is a one-way road coming up this way and going this way and going out this way. I think that is a much better solution. I'll leave this as a two-way road but I think one way that goes up and around and out is actually going to be the, the best option for this whole thing. Let me turn the whole thing around and I'll show you the result. Okay, so I want to give you 10 seconds to look at this and then I never want to think about it again. <laughs> I, just did, I just did this three times in a row, three different iterations. I had to realize that in the US at least, the bus... Uh, a standard school bus will have the door for students to walk in on the right side. Therefore, the bus lane must be on the right side when dropping people off, unless we want to have them come in this way and cross. But I'd rather have them drop them off right at the door and, and be done with it. So that means that people going to the auxiliary lot are either going to come up and around and change lanes to go in, or they're going to come in through this way and they'll just cross over to get in. This is a bit of a pinch point in the whole thing, but I don't think that the traffic will ever overwhelm it. I just wanted to show you how the arrows work. Um, it only took me three times to do it the way I wanted, but that's kind of typical, honestly. If you've ever seen my stream, you know that I'm, I'm into redoing stuff until it's correct. I'd say that's the bones of it. Now it's just time for that little extra, little extra pizzazz that really pushes it over the edge. The roads are in, the parking lots are in. I've got these curb networks. So pedestrians can actually use this if they want to. Beautiful. Just like that is pretty good. Let's put up some bollards as well. I think bollards are good in front of the school. We don't want anyone driving here. I can, I can search it if I can't select it. Bollard. Uh... Not a network, not exactly. I really like this one and I like the light bollard. The light bollard is similar to what I had when I went to school and this one, the, the stone bollard just looks really, really nice. So the light one I like in front of the building just to stop traffic from getting up on the curb as if that's a thing in the game. It's not, but just in principle, it's nice to not, <laughs> to not allow cars to drive up to the school. For realism. Very nice. There we go. So now the stone bollards. I love the stone bollards here. And if I find that people are walking into one of them too frequently, I might nudge it to the side or move the path a little bit. Just to keep things from getting too weird. So let's do, I like the red trees a lot. So let's take a red tree. All right, picker is being funky. So all of the maples are right here. I wonder, should I do trees along here and then bushes in the planter? I think I like that idea actually. So let's do uh, some trees. This might be a bit of a picnic area here. that. Then an orange one over here. Nice. This one's the same length, so I should be able to do the same thing. Very good. Okay. And then something smaller. There's a smaller bush that I've been using in other places, and I want to use that on this, uh, this thing here. The curb. Regular tiny, perhaps? Mm, too tiny. Regular bush. That's a bit better. Those spaced more proportionately would be fine.
cool. Okay, bushes are in. I want to grab the tables that we used at this school, too. Oh, and the leaves. Don't let me forget the leaves. All right, when you're on your lunch break, this is where you're going to want to be. Another situation of perfectly random. While placing these very specifically, we're going to try to get random results. If this works. If it doesn't, I will go back on it. Put it back the way it was. Ooh. Um, hmm. So this is Surface Painter, and you can see it's kind of breaking the road. So what I'm going to do instead is I have this ploppable pavement. Should I use prop line tool? Is there a downside to prop line tool? Uh, yeah, I don't want to use prop line tool. So let's plop one approximately where it belongs. And then we can use move it to get the rest of them there. Here, let's just put one in, move it, nudge it into position, duplicate. And then we'll take both of them, just bring them over. I'm all for green space, but in this situation, I'm okay. I'm okay doing this. There's a trick here, actually. So there's a bit of gravel showing or a bit of ruined texture. I'm going to use move it to elevate these slightly, and it should get rid of it. Oh, okay. I've missed the mark slightly. There it is. Except for this one. Can I get you? I think so. Oh, it's so close. That's okay. That's really good, I think. How about this? Instead of doing that, let's find a, a larger type of bush. Yeah, we've got these by the church that I used. So let's pull from there. We'll see if these are appropriate. Nice. Maybe a couple back here as well. I might actually have trash pickup happening from the, the back of this, maybe, using, uh, what is it, network? No. Vehicle spawn points. Vehicle spawn, have I lost my mind? What's it called? Building spawn points, excuse me. Building spawn points. Um, so this bit around the edge here, we are actually going to, to fill this in with concrete, I think, because that looks kind of bad. So let's use a uh, surface painter and we'll knock this out and then we'll put the trees in planters because that's probably what would happen in real life anyway with that for now. So now let's find the planter. There's a certain one that I usually uh, use, the small planter. I forget who made it. But it's really helpful in spots like this where you've got a tree that's on the pavement. Or you can do other things. I've got like triangular options. Kind of a, a funny circle. If we want, I could add a path on the corner. That may be the answer, honestly. For this one, anyway, I'm going to go with the, uh, the circle this one too. Here, let's take, uh, let's take move it and we'll just drag this guy around. Did I select the right? Okay. You. Uh, rotate it center to match this. So we want it squared off. Then we'll move it into position. Okay. 
Okay. All good stuff. Uh, one last, one last thing. Let's grab some of these leaves. Duplicate. And these have to be randomly rotated uh, somewhat manually. Not that it really matters. You can, you can do whatever you want, but I find that for each, each of these large trees, maybe two or three, two or three decals will do it. And you think I forgot about the football field. I didn't forget about the football field. It's going over here. Coincidentally, it works out perfectly. Uh, let's center this, maybe. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That looks really, really good. The Wildcats. Actually, that makes sense. UNH is the Wildcats. Is this always the Wildcats? Oh, it's random, the Predators. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, UNH is the Wildcats, so I'm gonna stick with Wildcats. Looks like that comes up randomly, so, um, that's pretty cool. <laughs> what do you know? Nice! So that is a, uh, a high school and a football field. Uh, I may do details about this, but I think this video has already gone on entirely too long. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the, uh, let's take a look at the results, shall we? I really appreciate you sticking with me on this one. This was a, an entire like 40 minute video dedicated to a high school, but I've realized that for me to be happy with what I'm building, I have to build kind of small and slow and really appreciate every piece of it. Cause I want to have those, those photo ops when it's all done. I want to have those, the story of the town. And I'm, I'm glad I get to share that with you today. Everyone, thank you for hanging out. I'm Yumble. Uh, I stream on Twitch twice a week. We have a great community Discord as well. Feel free to join up if you'd like. And definitely subscribe here on YouTube as well. Uh, thanks for being here. I'll see you in the next stream or the next video.